This is Huawei's newest budget smart band, the Huawei Band 7. This latest Huawei band looks a lot like its predecessor, but now it's slightly thinner and lighter. Over the last week, I've done different scientific tests on this new Huawei Band 7 and I found it to be a pretty good deal, but you do need to be aware it has some limitations. In several of my other videos I've shown that the previous generation, the Huawei Band 6, was pretty good at heart rate tracking for its price. This new version seems to have much of the same hardware and it's even a bit lighter, which could be a slight benefit when tracking heart rate because it sits more stable on the wrist. On the other hand, I didn't have high hopes for the sleep tracking though, since this has historically not been one of Huawei's strong sides. However, let's find out if this is the case for the Band 7 as well. In this video, I'll scientifically test the heart rate measurements, sleep tracking, oxygen saturation measurements, and step counting of the Huawei Band 7. Now, as always, I do not want to waste your time, so there are timestamps in the description below and also on the timeline. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now in my videos, I try to avoid lengthy discussions of the specifications. However, since this is a relatively new release, I'll try to summarize the 11 most important facts on the Huawei Band 7 in roughly 90 seconds. First off, the battery life of the Band 7 is pretty good, lasting 2 weeks with normal usage and up to 10 days with heavy usage. Additionally, the fast charging should charge the Band 7 with enough power for 2 days in just 5 minutes. It's also water resistant up to 50 meters, however it's not rated to be used for things like scuba diving or water skiing. The Band 7 is also not too expensive. According to the official information I originally got, it was 69 euros, but it seems to be 59 euros now from what I found online. It's produced in four colors, including Wilderness Green and Nebula Pink, and the two samples I have here are named Flame Red and Graphite Black. The Band 7 is pretty light, officially weighing in at 16 grams without the strap, compared to the 18 grams of the Band 6. The Band 7 is also slimmer than the Band 6 by 1mm, now being about 1cm thick. In terms of sensors, the Band 7 has an accelerometer, gyroscope and optical heart rate sensors. With these sensors it can automatically measure your oxygen saturation levels and it also has continuous heart rate monitoring. Using the True Sleep 2.0 algorithm, the Huawei Band 7 tracks the sleep stages you go through each night, but you do have to turn on that functionality. The AMOLED display of the Huawei Band 7 is much the same as that of the Band 6 at 1.47 inches and the resolution of 194 by 368 pixels. Now before I show you the results of my testing, I want to make one thing really clear. Huawei did send me these watches to test, but this video is not sponsored in any way and they did not have any influence on the contents. Now to the test results, if I had to summarize the results, I would say that for the price, the Huawei Band 7 is pretty decent, though it does have some drawbacks, and you might also want to consider some alternatives. Let's start by looking at the features that perform best in my testing, and close off with the things the watch did poorly. And the thing I like most about the watch is its heart rate tracking. I'll show you the results during spinning, cycling, and weightlifting. To do that, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Band 7 against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. We'll start by looking at the easiest type of exercise for a watch to track, cycling indoors. Now this involves very little movement or tension on my arms and will therefore produce less noise. Here we see an overview of that accuracy. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement, with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and on the vertical axis the value according to the Band 7. Now the closer the points are to the blue line, the better the agreement, and the darker black the color, the more dots there are. As you can see, there's a pretty good agreement between the ECG chest strap and the Band 7, as many points are along the blue line. The correlation, this R value right here, is also pretty high at 0.91. 
this correlation value cannot be higher than 1, so 0 0.91 is not bad at all. However, we do see this cloud of points right here in the lower heart rate ranges, where the band 7 actually detected a much too high heart rate. Let's find out why that is. We can actually see clearly why that is based on the individual cycling sessions. And here you can see my first interval spinning session, with along the horizontal axis the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue, I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and in red is my heart rate according to the band 7. As you can see, there's generally a good agreement between both devices. However, when my heart rate is at its peak, the band 7 detects a slightly too low heart rate, and when my heart rate drops, it sometimes shows a delay in picking that up, as you can see right here, but also right here and right here, for instance. And we can see that even better during some other spinning sessions. For instance, here you can see there's always a big delay in it picking up a decrease in my heart rate. However, at my high heart rates, it agrees a lot better. Now these delays are the reason for the cloud of points we saw before, where I detected a too high heart rate. And we see the same thing happening during this third spinning workout. Again, at the top it's a bit better than for the first workout, though here it's still a bit lower. But again, it shows a very clear delay in picking up decreases in my heart rate, which causes my heart rate to be detected as too high quite often. However, let's put this into perspective by comparing it to many of the other watches I've tested over the last two years. That overview is displayed here. The correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I'll use for this, and that is displayed along the horizontal axis. We want that value to be as close to one as possible. The further to the right and the higher a device is, the better its correlation with the reference device. Now here I marked a band 7 in red, and as you can see, it performs pretty okay compared to other watches. It's not amongst the top watches, which include the Apple watches and the Huawei watches from the GT3 series, but it performs decently, and likely good enough for many people. If you really want one of the best heart rate trackers, I also released a video on the new Huawei Watch GT3 Pro, which is linked up here. However, not everyone wants to spend that kind of money, so let's zoom in to better compare the Band 7 to other watches. That zoomed in view with just the watches with a correlation of 0.8 and higher shows that the Band 7 performs very similarly to the Huawei Band 6, and also the GT2 series of Huawei and the Mi Band 6. And it actually performs better than many of the new Garmin watches I've tested over the last months. However, cycling indoors is actually one of the easiest types of exercises for a watch to track, and cycling outdoors is much more difficult. While cycling outdoors, there's much more movement and also much more tension on the arm. All of this makes it harder for a watch to get a clean heart rate signal. However, the benefit of the Band 7 is that it's quite light, making it much more stable on the wrist. Here we see a similar overview plot to before, but now for biking outside. As you can see, there's still a pretty good agreement between the Band 7 and the ECG chest strap, though the correlation is slightly lower compared to what we saw before for cycling indoors, with the correlation now being 0.76. We see both points above and below the blue line, indicating that the Band 7 detected both a too high and too low heart rate sometimes. And we can see why that is based on the individual training sessions. Take this training session for instance, where we see the band 7 in red. This is one of the rides where the band 7 had the worst accuracy. And we can see that the band tended to have some issues detecting quick drops and peaks in my heart rate. So though the overall patterns are more or less correct, it had trouble picking up sudden changes in my heart rate. However, this bike ride right here is already a lot better, with still some delays in picking up some changes, though it's not bad at all. And that's what we see for most bike rides, where the watch agrees mostly quite well with the chest strap, though there are definitely some small deviations. And that's also what we see for this ride right here, for instance, where mostly the dips in my heart rate are not completely reached, but overall it did pretty well. We can again put this into perspective by looking at many of the watches I've tested over the last years. Similar to before, we used the correlation with the ECG chest strap as the value on the horizontal axis, and the better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. And as you can see, though it's not amongst the best heart rate trackers, it does appear to be amongst roughly the second tier of heart rate trackers for cycling outside. It's about as good as for instance the Whoopstrap 4.0 and the Garmin Instinct 2, which is not bad at all. This means it does not disappoint so far. 
So this is not looking bad at all for the band 7, particularly if we take its price into consideration. Next, let's take a look at one of the most difficult exercises for a watch to track, weightlifting. So far, out of all of the watches I've tested, I would say that only the Apple Watches and the Huawei Watch GT Runner and GT3 Pro were good enough for heart rate tracking while weightlifting. Let's see if the Band 7 can get close to these. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off-the-cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, that's totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance during weightlifting. If we look at the overview of all watches, we again see that the Band 7 is definitely in the upper segment of watches. However, let's zoom in since it's quite tricky to see it like this. If we zoom in to just the watches with a correlation of 0.5 and higher, we see that the Band 7 performs about as well as the Huawei Band 6 and even the Huawei Band 5. And it's actually similar in performance to for instance the Polar Verity Sense and Polar OH1 Plus, which are commonly used optical heart rate sensors. The Band 7 is not amongst the top heart rate trackers though, which are again the Apple Watches and the GT3 series from Huawei. If we look at some example weightlifting sessions, we can also see that the agreement is not the worst we've ever seen, however it definitely was not perfect. Each time I do a set of exercises, I have a peak in my heart rate, which is plotted here in blue according to the chest strap, however the band 7 in red was not always able to track this. Which we can see even more clearly during this second weightlifting session, where the band 7 actually misses the majority of my peaks, as you can see right here. Overall, the Huawei Band 7 did quite well. It seems to be on par with several of the more expensive watches I've tested, or potentially even outperforming them slightly. It did show some artifacts during indoor cycling, and during weightlifting it did struggle quite a bit, so I wouldn't use it when lifting weights. If I had to rate the heart rate tracking, I'd give it 4 out of 5 stars, especially considering the low price point. So that means that the optical heart rate sensor of the Band 7 appears to be pretty good at heart rate tracking. But how does it perform at measuring your oxygen saturation, or in other words, SpO2? As you will see in the results I'll share in a moment, it was indeed able to correctly detect when I had a normal oxygen saturation. To test the oxygen saturation measurements, over the last week I measured my oxygen saturation at ground level in the morning and evening using the Band 7. At the same time I also recorded my oxygen saturation with a dedicated finger pulse examiner. Now whereas heart rate is generally measured with green light, red and infrared light are used to measure oxygen saturation. At ground level, my oxygen saturation should be in my normal range, which is generally between 97 and 100% and it should not fall below roughly 95%. However, when the effective oxygen concentration in the air is much lower, as it is for instance in an airplane, my oxygen saturation can drop below 90%. Let's start by looking at my oxygen saturation measurements at ground level. On the left are 40 measurements taken with the band 7 in the red part here and on the right are matching measurements taken with the finger pulse oximeter in the blue part here. On the vertical axis are the SpO2 values and each dot is a single measurement. As you can see the band 7 is generally within my normal range of SpO2 values and in roughly the same range as the dedicated finger pulse oximeter. However, it does occasionally detect too low SpO2 values of 94% and lower, as you can see right here. In this case, this only happened twice. We can see that even more clearly if we display these results as a histogram. In this case, the SpO2 values are along the horizontal axis, and the larger the bar, the more often this value was recorded. As you can see, the band 7, which is displayed here in red, is mostly in the same range as the finger pulse oximeter, which is displayed here in blue. However, it's probably more important to know if the band 7 can detect a lowered oxygen saturation. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to test it in a low oxygen environment. However, I did perform that test on the Huawei Band 6, which is very similar to the Band 7 and shows similar performance for both the heart rate and the SpO2 testing I did so far. I therefore suspect that this is the exact same sensor layout. Now I'm not 100% sure that this is the case, but I do think there is value in sharing that test. To test it, I took the Band 6 with me on a flight. Now in the plane, the pressure in the cabin is decreased during a flight, which effectively lowers the oxygen concentration. 
In pink here, I plotted how my oxygen saturation changed during a flight as measured using my dedicated finger pulse oximeter. As you can see, my SpO2 started out normal. Then as the plane ascended, my oxygen saturation decreased and it stayed low during the flight. Then as we descended, it increased again and got back to normal levels. Here you can see the measurements by the band 6 in green dots. And indeed, it seems that it generally follows along nicely with the dedicated finger pulse oximeter. The values drop significantly during the flight and they are at normal levels before takeoff and after landing except for this one deviant measurement right here. Just to put that into perspective, here on the left are the values I took with the band 6 at ground level. As you can see the distribution of values at ground level for the band 6 looks very similar to the measurements taken with the band 7. And what you might also appreciate is that the values in air do tend to be much lower compared to those measured at ground level, indicating that the band 6 is able to detect a lowered oxygen saturation. I will do a similar test on the band 7 in the future, but this is the best I can do for now since I'm not planning to take a flight in the next few weeks. However, based on the results I've gotten for the band 7 and band 6 and the general similarity of both devices, I think that odds are that the results I showed will also translate to the new band 7. What we can say based on my testing of the band 7 is that it mostly detects correct SpO2 values at ground level. And if it indeed performs similarly to the band 6, it will also be able to detect a lowered SpO2 level. Of course, I will further test that in the future. But still, based on the testing I've done so far, I'd give the SpO2 measurements of the band 7 4 out of 5 stars. There is a small asterisk attached to this score though, since that assumes that the measurements in a low oxygen environment are similar to that of the band 6. Next, let's move on to the thing I found the band 7 to be worst at. And this will not come as a surprise, it is sleep stage tracking. Like most new Huawei watches, the Huawei Band 7 uses the True Sleep 2.0 technology, so let's see how it performed. To check if the Band 7 can detect my sleep stages, I'll compare it to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be relatively reliable at sleep stage tracking. Here I show an overview of the sleep test results. For getting an overall impression of how well the Band 7 performs, the Dream 2 should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which I'd also like to try on the Band 7 in the future. Now on top here are the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device, and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Band 7. I wore both the EEG device and the Band 7 to bed for 3 nights, and I will see how close the predictions of the Band 7 are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 was predicted as each sleep stage by the Band 7. If they perfectly agree, all values along the diagonal should be 100%. First of all, we see that only 20% of what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was also predicted as deep sleep by the band 7. Now this is a really low amount and not looking very good. Most of what the EEG device marked as deep sleep was actually detected as light sleep by the band 7. And a similar amount was detected as awake time. However, there was a very specific reason for this. And we can see that based on the individual nights. The biggest issue the band 7 showed was during this example night right here. On top we have the sleep stage according to the Dream 2 EEG headband with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stages on the vertical axis. On the bottom we have a similar plot but now for the band 7. I've highlighted all the EEG recorded deep sleep in purple here. And as you can see, the band 7 detected this first segment of deep sleep as a wake time. That is because it detected me as falling asleep way too late. This has to do with a characteristic we've seen before for the true sleep algorithm that Huawei uses. Basically, the Huawei algorithm took two of my awake moments, which are marked here in green, one before falling asleep and this one later in the night, and it connected them into one long awake moment. Now, we've seen similar problems looking at other Huawei watches. For instance, also for the Huawei Watch GT3 Pro I looked at a few days ago. Now, other nights are not necessarily better, but for different reasons. For instance, during this example night right here, the band 7 detected almost no deep sleep during this first part of the night, and that is very unlikely from a sleep science perspective. 
light sleep detection was also not very good, with the band 7 only showing a 43% agreement with the headband. A large part of what the EEG device said was light sleep was actually marked as deep sleep by the band 7. REM sleep agreement was also pretty bad at only 30%, with over 60% of what the EEG device said was REM sleep detected as light sleep by the band 7. If we look at the individual nights, we can indeed see why this is. In red here, I marked the REM sleep as it was detected by the EEG device. And as you can see, there's very poor agreement between the band 7 and the EEG device. To me, the REM sleep as recorded by the band 7 seems more or less randomly distributed. And we see the same thing for this second night, where the band 7 detected a lot of extra REM sleep throughout the night, and especially here at the very start. This also means we cannot really see the sleep cycles. Now you go through roughly four to six sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light sleep and deep sleep marked in blue, and each one ending in REM sleep marked in red. As you can see, I likely had one, two, three, four complete sleep cycles this night. However, if we were just looking at the stages recorded by the band 7, you would not be able to see them. Now, awake detection was not the worst, with an agreement of just over 60%. If they did disagree, this was mostly with light sleep, as you can see here. And this is not unexpected, since light sleep is the closest sleep stage to being awake. To put these results into context, we can compare the performance of the band 7 to that of many other watches. This graph shows an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. On the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. The better the agreement the more to the top right the device is. And as you can see the best agreeing devices include different Fitbits, whoop straps and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. If we now plot the Huawei Band 7 in the same plot, which is marked in red, we see that its average percentage agreement is about the same as that of most other Huawei watches, which makes sense given that they likely use the same or similar algorithms. The worst agreeing sleep stage is slightly worse for the Band 7 compared to many other Huawei watches, but I suspect that this is likely just by chance. Overall, I wouldn't put too much faith in the exact sleep stages as they are tracked by the Huawei Band 7. We saw some of the same issues we generally see for all Huawei watches when it comes to sleep tracking. Huawei does a few things really well, but sleep tracking is not one of them. Therefore, overall, I'd give the sleep tracking of the Huawei Band 7 2 out of 5 stars. The next thing that the Huawei Band 7 was good at is step counting. To test the step counting, I went out and took exactly 4000 steps with the band 7. Now I do not like counting 4000 steps in my head, which is why I counted each step manually using this tally counter. Let's take a look at those results. I actually counted my steps in 4 segments of 1000 steps, switching the tally counter between my left and right hand, which is what the right and left labels refer to here, and I wore the band 7 on my left arm. Now these numbers right here are the actual steps counted for each of the four segments by the band 7. As you can see the band 7 was pretty much spot on in counting my steps. It was at most 7 steps off which is really good. To put that into perspective here are the steps counted by the Huawei Band 6 and the Huawei Watch GT3 Pro I wore at the same time. As you can see, the Huawei Band 6 performed about as good or even slightly better than the Band 7, counting almost the exact correct number of steps and only being two steps off maximally. The GT3 Pro counted a few more steps, but overall it was still very close to the actual steps I took. Now it's difficult to make any definitive conclusions based on just this test, but the step counting of the Huawei Band 7 seems to be really accurate, though we still need to test if it counts any steps when it's not supposed to count steps, for instance while cycling or typing. So without knowing any of that, I'd preliminarily give the step counting accuracy of the Huawei Band 7 4.5 out of 5 stars. In using the Band 7, I found that there are some factors that might make the band less attractive for people, and I mentioned some of the same concerns in my video on the Huawei Watch GT3 Pro as well. The first is that there's no direct Strava integration, which I think would be amazing to have. On Android, you can use this app called HealthSync to get around that, and I found it to be really useful, but direct integration is definitely preferred. 
The second thing is that the US government also put some restrictions on Huawei's dealings in the US, which has curtailed the use of most Google-owned services and products by Huawei. This does mean that installing some apps or add-ons is slightly more complicated with Huawei watches, which could include having to install Huawei's own app store on your phone. In Europe, I haven't really had any major issues using Huawei products, but if you have any experience with this in the US, let us know in the comments below. I also want to address if I think it's worth it to buy the Huawei Band 7 over the Huawei Band 6, since the Band 6 will likely see a significant price drop with the release of the Band 7. Overall, based on the data I have, I think the performance of the Band 7 and Band 6 are very similar. The main difference between the two seems to be that the Band 7 is slightly thinner and lighter. When I hold both in my hands at the same time, the difference is definitely noticeable, though it is quite a minor difference. If you already own the Band 6, I see no reason for you to upgrade. However, if you're looking to buy either of these and the price difference is not too big, I would recommend just going for the newer Band 7. On the other hand, if the price difference is quite big, I would think that the Band 6 might be a better choice, since most people would not notice the difference between the Band 6 and Band 7 too much. In terms of health and sports tracking, there are a lot of things to like about the Huawei Band 7. Based on my testing, I found that the heart rate tracking is pretty good for the price and the oxygen saturation sensor also appears promising. The step counting also appears pretty much spot on, at least based on the tests I did. However, the sleep stage tracking is not something I would rely on, so if that is your focus, you might want to consider a Fitbit device, the Whoop strap or the Withing Sleep Analyzer. If you plan to buy a Huawei band, any of these devices or anything at all on Amazon for that matter and at the same time support the channel, there are affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any more money and some even provide a discount. Before I share my final thoughts, I should mention that a few days ago I also released the first impressions video on the Huawei Watch Fit 2 and a full review of the Huawei Watch GT3 Pro which was amazing at heart rate tracking. Now back to the Huawei Band 7, I think that for the price the device works pretty well and based on my experience so far I'd give the watch 3.5 out of 5 stars overall. However personally I might actually search for a good deal on the Huawei Band 6 since not too much has changed compared to that version. If you want to see future updates on the Huawei Band 7 consider subscribing to the channel. Now the Huawei Watch GT3 series has amazing heart rate tracking and you can find those videos right here. I'll also link the recent reviews I did on Garmin watches right here. Now I hope this video provided you with some value. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.